Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the best types of probiotics. I'll be talking about what I actually do in my clinic with patients and the results that I see. So there's a couple different kinds of probiotics. We'll talk about what they are, um, where to get them from, and then we'll also talk about the benefits and all some of the pros and the cons as well. Before we dive in, please smash that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Also, put your comments down below. What's your experience with probiotics? What have you noticed? What are, what are the benefits? What are the side effects that you've noticed as well? Put those in the comments below. All right, before we dive in, let's start to break it down. So three major types of probiotic species. The first one are gonna be your lactobacillus and your bifidobacter species. This is like your typical type of probiotic, you know, with a major research line that's out, it's VSL3. Uh, I have a product out called ProBioFlora that has about 12 of these species in it. So Lactobacillus, lots of different kinds. There's Lactobacillus acidophilus, uh, Lactobacillus casei, uh, there's Bifido species, Bifido longus, Bifido infantis, Bifido subtilis. There's, there's a lot of different ones. My probiotic is about 12, six and six of each. There's a lot of good ones that are out there. Really important, when you look at the number on there, the higher quality companies are gonna guarantee what that number of probiotics is at expiration, not at creation. So the bad companies will say, this is how many probiotics, how many billions of units, CFU, colony forming units were in the probiotic when you created it. The good companies will say, hey, we're gonna overdo it because we're gonna calculate a 25 or 30 or 40% kill rate on these bacteria over the next two years, right? So you want higher quality companies, that way you're getting a lot more. Like with my probiotic, it's gonna have 20 billion per capsule. A good probiotic is gonna probably have 30 or 40 in there to compensate on the loss side. So you get 20 to 40, 20 billion or so at expiration. So high quality companies are really important. Uh, number two, is gonna be, these are gonna also be found in fermented foods. So we'll talk a little bit more about the food stuff. Next one are gonna be spore-based probiotics. So there's different brands that are out there. The one that I use is gonna be Megaspore. They have a really, really good bacillus strain. So the big spore-based ones are gonna be the bacillus strains. So you're gonna have bacillus clausii, Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus coagul uh, coagulus, coagulans, uh, Bacillus lichenformis. These are gonna be spore-based strains. Now, these are actually taken with food. They're acid resistant, and they actually help potentiate, they help grow these probiotics over here. So spore-based probiotics can actually help potentiate the growth of the lactobacillus and bifido species. And there's about you know half a dozen to a dozen of each of these bifido and lactobacillus. There's different like numbers you'll see, which is more research and patent driven. Um, so you can see sporebiotics are really helpful. Now the side effects of the lactobacillus and the bifidobacter tends to be more from the delactate. All right, so delactate is produced by a lot of the bifido and lactobacillus strains. And people that have SIBO, this could be a no-no. And so with SIBO, you may see something called probiotic intolerance. So if you're having this kind of probiotic and you're getting bloated or gassy or brain foggy, it's probably probiotic intolerance. So this is where a sporebiotic come in because they are not gonna give you that delactate. You also, if you're a probiotic intolerance, you may be able to handle it better. Next is gonna be actually a beneficial yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. We kind of put it in the probiotic category because it does have a good effect on your microbiome. A lot of good immune modulating benefits too we'll talk about down here below. So Saccharomyces boulardii is actually a beneficial yeast but we still put it in that probiotic category. It has lots of good immune benefits and it does actually knock down, it does actually decrease candida. It does have a really good crowding out effect against candida. Very helpful. So usually I'm gonna be combining a Saccharomyces with one of these two or three. Now there's a couple other probiotics that I'll slip in. There are some probiotics on the lactobacillus side that are lower histamine, where the, the lactobacillus casei or paracasei is pulled out. So there is some low histamine probiotic ones that we'll use from time to time, people that are really sensitive. And then there are some lactobacillus and bifido strains that are also delactate free as well. So there's two variations here. There's a, there's a low delactate. There's a low delactate and there's also a, a low histamine. And these can be helpful. 
All right, hope that helps there. Now, the benefits of probiotics are really important because we're gonna have major immune benefits. So probiotics are actually gonna decrease inflammation significantly. When we decrease inflammation, we have an immune modulating effect, so we can improve immune function here. We also can see an improvement also in IgA levels. Very important. Saccharomyces especially really helps the IgA. When we improve immune and gut permeability, or when we improve immune and gut inflammation, we also see an improvement of gut permeability. So we have less leaky gut, and we also see decrease in zonulin. And zonulin is that protein that makes the gut more permeable. Also nutrient production. So good healthy bacteria has endogenous B vitamins, vitamin K, really important. So you get a lot of good nutrition that comes from healthy gut bacteria. We're also gonna see a change in pH, right? We decrease the pH when we have good healthy bacteria like the lactobacillus and acidophilus. That literally means acid loving. Acidophilus, acid loving, bifido, lactobacillus species are gonna decrease the pH. This makes it harder for bacteria to grow. Harder for bad bacterial growth. Really, really important. Because it's not just about killing or changing the immune system, which is all great and improving gut permeability, but we make it harder for good stuff, I'm sorry, for bad stuff to grow when we improve the good stuff. We shift that pH. This is also common in the vaginal canal for women that have BV or yeast infections or UTI, same kind of effect there. Typically we see this alkalizing of that urinary tract or vaginal canal when more bacteria grow. We see it with birth control pill and antibiotic use. We have this rebound overgrowth. This is where it's really important to add in Saccharomyces. And also crowding things out. I kind of already alluded to that. Saccharomyces is great at crowding out H. pylori. And, and I'll have, we'll be kind of crowding and killing is the same thing, right? If you push it out, you're kind of removing it from that environment. So decreasing H. pylori, blasto, uh, yeast, good probiotics like lactobacillus and bifido species will actually crowd out blasto as well, H. pylori. They actually will help crowd out a lot of that bad bacteria in SIBO. So if you've done a good clearing program, you want to add in good probiotics in to kind of take up the range of the space that was taken up by that bad bacteria. Nature abhors a vacuum. So if you do a whole bunch of weeding in the garden and you don't put nice plants down, guess what happens? Weeds are kind of on autopilot to grow back. So it's really important once we do the weeding, then we do the seeding. And this is where it's really helpful to add in good probiotics after we clear. Probiotics can also have a clearing effect as well with the Saccharomyces and the Lactobacillus on top of that. And then also very important the kind of the analogy is we, we do the weaning, then we drop down the seeds, which are the probiotics, and we may even also want to throw in prebiotics along with probiotics. Sometimes prebiotics help. Prebiotics increase beneficial bacteria levels. This is really important. So whether it's uh, d lactone or whether it's prebiotic fibers from cool potato starch or whether it's unripened banana flour, right? Or various inulin or chicory root prebiotic formulas, very helpful, can help a lot of the probiotics grow and kind of gain a foothold better. And again, probiotics are transient. So these guys are only gonna hang out for maybe four weeks, maybe a month. So it's important that we try to add in natural probiotics in our food, whether it's Fermented foods like, um, just trying to think here, whether it's raw dairy, if we can tolerate that, whether it's sauerkraut, whether it's fermented pickles, whether it's low sugar kombucha, whether it's kimchi, right? These are all really good fermentable foods. Now, if you're getting brain fog and you have a lot of probiotic intolerance, we have to look back at SIBO or other major gut infections. But if we can throw these in, that's great. If we can't, we're gonna lean on more probiotics via supplementation. I always tell patients, if you can get more natural fermented foods in your diet, we can rely on the supplements less for probiotics. If you have less natural fermented foods, we have to rely more on the probiotic in capsule form. So I'll put the recommended links here for the ones that I use. A lot of good brands out there 
And again, there's research to support everything. There's hundreds, if not thousands of studies on probiotics and their benefits. I'll put a couple of the references down below. And if you guys enjoyed this issue or this topic and you want to dive in deeper, or you want to schedule a consult with myself and or my colleagues, look below here. There'll be a link for you to schedule if you need. Make sure you subscribe to get access to great, more cutting edge info coming your way. It's Dr. J signing off. Take care. Bye.